potential, then stay tuned because I'm going to show you how to maximize your potential and all things and accelerate in the full calling that God has for your life. Today, I'm going to show you how to move forward in your life with divine timing. And when you understand this concept, there is nothing that can stand in your way. So are you ready? Then let's get started. The Bible tells us clearly in the book of Ecclesiastes that there is a time appointed for every purpose. The challenge for most of us is to learn to flow in sync with the seasons of heaven. In my years of ministry, I've seen so many people who have, for lack of a better word, aborted their purpose, their, their giftings, or even their anointing, because they were just not in sync and in harmony with what God was doing in a specific season. You have to be able to discern and embrace the season you are in. Once you understand that season, you'll be able to respond appropriately and get everything that God has for you in that time. It's difficult for so many people because we want to move faster and we want to run ahead of God in many instances because going through difficult times seem as if it's a waste of time. But God has a process. He's working in all of our lives and he makes beautiful everything in its time. God is the one that created time and God created time to follow a specific sequence. Life is to time what wet is to water and heat is to fire. We must be vigilant in conferring with God concerning the timing of everything. David recorded a prayer. He said, so teach us to number our days that we can apply our hearts to wisdom. God is a strategic God and he wants to give you wisdom for life and living. Wisdom is gained over a period of time based on experiences. In order for us to really live life on purpose, we've got to be able to understand divine timing and understanding divine timing is going to help you to master the ability to balance conflict, to eliminate the distractions and to gain God inspired priorities. It's not just a matter of it being from God, but it's a matter of it being for us. So when we think about timings, a lot of us think about timing as a clock and a calendar and something that we manage and all of those things are man-made. But when we talk about divine timing, we're talking about things such as sequence and syncopation and synchronization. Timing is everything. I can tell you this, that I catch the airplane a lot of time and there are one or two times that I missed my flight. And I missed it because the airline works with timing and it's all syncopated. It's not only the pilot that I'm concerned about or the people that are working behind the counter that are taking my tickets while well, we have the air traffic control as well and there are so many things that have to be synchronized that that it in order for there not to be collisions and action uh, um, uh, accidents in the air they have to be synchronized, syncopated, but here's the important thing, there's gotta be sequenced. And so they can't hold up a flight just for me, although I want them to, and there are many times I have argued, I'm a million miler, but guess what? They, they have to deal with sequence, it has to be syncopated, and it has to be synchronized. This is what God is talking about when he talks about timing. He's not talking about a calendar, He's not talking about our, our, our to-do list. He's talking about all of the other things that are happening in the big scheme of things. And he wants to get us synchronized because what we do by way of purpose and assignment is not only just about us and our life and our success and our prosperity. It's about all of the other things and moving parts that are going on in the big scheme of God's unfolding plan in humanity. Let me give you an example of this. In the Bible, it talks about Moses. Moses becoming a deliverer. Of course, we know the story of how he was adopted by Pharaoh's um, 
uh, daughter after being dropped in the water. And we know the whole story. But Moses received a prompting that his timing had come and, and, and it had come for him to rise up as a deliverer of his nation. This had been 10 years prior to the statute of limitation for their bondage in Egypt, which was approximately 400 years. So there was no one there to help him to understand these promptings. So he acted presumptuously and killed a man. He ended up in the wilderness for 40 years. Thus, the children of Israel, if you take um, the 400 minus 40 and you do your maths, you're going to end up with them being 30 years past the prophetic statue of limitation. And this is how we get the fact that it was 10 years prior. If it was 430 minus 40, we end up at the 390 mark. Now, this is very important because back in those days, they didn't have clocks like we had. They didn't have calendars like we had. But how was Moses to know that his time had come? There was an inner prompting. And this is why as we pray, Pray. We're praying for the timing of the Lord as well so that we can match the inner prompting with the sequence of the unfolding of God's events in the bigger scheme of things. So that means that we have to learn how to move in sync with God's timing based on the promptings of the Lord. We have to learn heaven's rhythm through prayer. Most of us never take the time to ask the Holy Spirit to teach us. But when you talk about timing, we've got to be able to say, Holy Spirit, teach me how to learn heaven's rhythm and to pick up heaven's frequency. Time and place are inextricably connected. So if I ask you to meet me for lunch at one o'clock, but I don't give you a place or a zip code, you can fulfill my request. So when we talk about timing, we're talking about prophetic zip codes as well. Listen to this. Adam met God in the cool of the morning in a place called Eden. So time and place are inextricably connected. I call this a prophetic grid. There is a prophetic grid in which his will for your life has to be carried out. Here's the caveat. It, 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 a lot of times we are pushed out of that place because we want to get out of a situation or circumstance that sometimes may be God, but we think that it's not. For instance, Joseph was in a prison. And many of us would have been praying, God move Joseph out of the prison because he is innocent. Many times God has allowed things to happen in our lives because he's preparing us for something big and something great. The preparation for your destiny began even before you were conceived. Listen to this, the Lamb of God was slain before the foundation of the world. God told Jeremiah, before you were born in your mother's womb, I ordain you to be a prophet. This is exciting because when we deal with time, we usually deal with it as if it's just empty space within a parenthetical moment in history that we are just going into. But time is like a womb. Time and space actually has already been eclipsed by eternity. By the time you were born, you were born into something that was in motion. Every morning you wake up, time is already in motion. One of the things that we have to do, therefore, is that if God in his omniscience knows everything, we've got to trust the process that God has placed us in. Just showing up if he has a scheduled, I call it a bus for you to show up at three o'clock in the afternoon, don't be hanging around in the restaurant taking your last sip of, 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 of cap, uh, coffee or your last sip of your favorite drink, looking at your watch, knowing that you've got five minutes to get from the restaurant to the bus to make it on time. Don't sit around and say, I'm gonna see if I can make it in two minutes. And what I'm doing now is so pleasurable that I think I can, I think I can, and then end up showing up like I did a couple of minutes late. And I, I literally mean it was a couple of minutes late. I saw them close the door and the airplane was still on the runway another 10 minutes. And I kept saying, why can't you let me in. He, they said, this is the procedure I have to follow. Isn't that interesting? 
A lot of us want to jump over the procedure that God has described to us. Sometimes when a season ends, some of us want, no matter how good it is, we don't want that season to end and we don't want to make it into the next season for many reasons and we miss our prophetic bus. God has a plan, he has a procedure, and he has a process, but our individual processes are different from God's. This is why we talk about syncopation. Get syncopated to heaven's rhythm concerning your life. Don't try to keep up with anyone else's. The devil will make it seem as if you are out of rhythm with everyone else. But listen to what Henry Thoreau said. He said, if a man loses pace with his companions, perhaps it is because he hears a different drummer. Let him step to the music which he hears, however measured or far away. Each one of us have to keep up with heaven's rhythm for our lives. You will not always see the benefit of what you are going through or what God has called you to because you are seeing through the eyes of a child. Seeing it through the eyes of a child simply means that you're going to trust your heavenly father that he knows best. God is a God that is going to announce your coming at the right time. He declared this about Jesus, that this is my beloved son in whom I well please. And that declaration did not come until he was being baptized in the water. And so when we talked about time and place being inextricably connected, when you get in that place, according to the divine timetable of God, and you were doing the right thing at the right time with the right people for the right reason, God is going to announce your coming too. So stay tuned because it is time for the smart board. So I'm going to be right back. So welcome back. I want to give you some pointers that you can use in order to move in the divine timing of the Lord. The first thing I want you to do is to begin your routine with respect to your understanding of God's will for your life. So we're going to start with routine. Making sure that you stick to a routine. What do you do on Mondays? What do you do on Tuesdays? What do you do on Wednesdays and Thursdays and Fridays? Stick to a routine. The second thing I want you to do is to build an altar where you will talk and hear from God. I just say that taking me moments and make sure that there's a specific time and place. When I take my me moments, my me moments are eight o'clock in the evening. This is a time that I have dedicated to talk to God, hearing God, finding a strategy. And when I go into that place, I not only take my Bible, but I also take a notepad and a pen. Whenever you begin to talk to God and hear from God, you don't want to just believe that you're going to remember and recall everything. There are so many things that God has said to me when I found that place, when I found that spot, and when I was talking to God, sometimes he gave me the most amazing revelation or the most amazing uh, mandates to do. And I said to myself, well, I'll remember this after a couple of minutes. But when I got out of that place, I couldn't always recall. So whenever you stick to a routine and you have those me moments where you make an appointment with God and you keep that appointment, make sure you take your Bible, your notepad, your iPad, something that you can record what God is saying so that you can recall it and remember it. When you get up from talking to God, do something now. A lot of us have a habit of saying, well, I'll do it later or I'll do it next week. And then life happens and we miss the sequence and the syncopation of what God has for our life. You've heard of the saying, a day late and a dollar short. 
That's what my mother used to say. Cindy, if you don't stick to routine, you're going to end up being a day late and a dollar short. So we don't want you to be a day late and a dollar short when it comes to sticking to a routine and sticking to the timing of the Lord. Now, here's another thing that I want you to do is to start your day at the feet of Jesus. So when you get up in the morning, you're going to start your, your day with good morning, Holy Spirit. And then you just take some time before you get on the telephone. Most of us, uh, you know, the first thing we do is roll over. We pick up our telephone. We start texting and faxing and tweeting. But what is if heaven had a tweet that they wanted to give you and you're so distracted and God is like, hey, trying to get your attention and then you miss a uh, sequence or you miss doing something that could have uh, positively affected the outcome of your day. So I want you to start every day Start every day with God. Roll over and say, good morning, Holy Spirit. And ask him, is there a strategy? Is there a plan that you have for me? And listen before you pick up that telephone or before you get on to your day-to-day -day routine. The next thing I want you to do, I want you to have an ear throughout the day listening to the Holy Spirit and being sensitive to the prompting of the Spirit. I want to give you a, an example of this. When I travel from my house to my office and my office back to my house, I follow the same path. There was one day I was in the same aisle or the same lane driving the same speed and I heard the Holy Spirit say, cross over in your lane, cross over in the lane, your, your lane. I knew it had to be the Holy Spirit. So I crossed over and when I crossed over, I get around the van and there is a three car pileup and I would have been the fourth. Listening to God. to the promptings of the Spirit is going to help you as well. Now here's another important thing. Never get other people's urgencies and priorities mixed up with your urgencies and your priorities. Make sure that you understand that everyone is moving according to the timetable that God has for them. And just because it's urgent for someone else, it doesn't mean that it's urgent for you. So know where you you start and others finish. Remember, just because people have plans for your life, it doesn't mean that it's synchronized and syncopated with God's plan for your life. So as you hear the promptings of the Lord, as you get your instructions day by day, as you take your me moment, now comes to the most important thing. And this means that I gotta erase it, so stand by. I want to go back to this word routine. What you consistently do holds the secret to what you end up with in your future. This speaks to me as a big word called preparation. When it comes to preparation, preparation determines your performance in the future. So whatever you want to prosper in, you must be prepared for that in your future. And you've got to make this an activity that you do on a daily basis. Similarly, whatever you want to eliminate from your life, you must intentionally choose not to do it on a daily basis. This practice builds the habit that you will become the, that eventually will become the foundation of your success and prosperity in your future. Now, I wanna, I wanna challenge you with two quotes. One of the quotes is from Lord Chesterfield. He said this, 
Know the true value of time, snatch it, seize it, and enjoy every moment of it. No idleness, no laziness, no procrastination. Never put off till tomorrow what you can do today. One of the things that King David said, he said, so teach us or teach me to number my days that my, I may apply my heart to wisdom. When you follow these steps, you're going to be able to apply your heart to wisdom and you're going to have the competitive advantage over all of the forces that attempt to knock you out of divine timing. When it comes to living life within a specific time frame, there are activities that God is uh, downloaded into your life long before you were born. It's like catching a bus and knowing the schedule of that bus. The one thing that you have to do in order to catch that bus, you got to show up and you got to show up on time. This brings me back to the three most important words when it comes to divine timing. The first one is syncopation. The second one is synchronization. And then the last one is sequence. This is important. What do I do first? What do I do second? What do I do third? What do I do fourth? This one is about being synchro synchronized. It's not just about you, but it's all of the unfolding of God's plan throughout humanity. Who should you be synchronized with? There might be another person. There might be another organization. There might be another ministry. Getting the synchronization right is important. And then syncopation. Heaven has its own rhythm. And being able to keep syncopated to heaven's, uh, heaven's rhythm means that you pick up heaven's frequency. This is all about staying in divine timing. When you move according to God's divine timetable, you will stop giving your personal power away to things that are going on on the outside of you. You will start to begin to understand that greater is he is, that is on the inside of you than he that is in the world. He's going to empower you. And once you start moving according to his divine timetable, things on the outside no longer will be dictating to where you end up. Pick up yourself, begin to talk to God, get synchronized, syncopated to his will, and begin to move according to his dictates and get things in the proper sequence. And I promise you, you will be living a life beyond your dreams. Stay tuned. Join Dr. Cindy Trim for these next live appearances. you to see God's great plan for your life to become a reality. But don't short circuit the process. Don't get frustrated if it seems as if things aren't moving in the direction you think they should. Remember, trust God in the process and also embrace the process that he brings into your life that will lead and guide you and commit to regular life of routine. If you put these things into action, you're gonna find a fruitful place. Today, I want to equip you with some powerful resources that will help you to begin to discern the timing and season in your life. If you felt lost or simply going through the motion, then it's time for you to begin to take action to build the life you've always wanted. Maybe you feel stuck right where you are and you need to find a way to begin moving forward again. Let me tell you, if you are moving with divine timing, God will open doors for you that you could never open yourself. So call me right now. Take advantage of the special resource offering. If you're ready to take that next step into destiny, this collection is vital. I'm gonna send you my complete message entitled, Moving with Divine Timing, Discovering Your Prophetic Grid. In this message, I not only share some of what you've heard today, but I also reveal the crucial link between destiny and intercession and how you can begin to move things in the spirit when you pray. 
I also identify roadblocks to your breakthroughs, things you may have realized that are holding you back, but you never had the tools or skills or ability in order to surmount them. I promise you, you'll never see the life you want if you don't start preparing for it right now. I'm going to walk you through the process of mapping out and constructing the life of your dream. Together, step by step, we can help you to begin to move in divine timing and into destiny. And let's start doing it right now.